So monitoring now becomes the tip of the observability iceberg. You have the monitoring up at the top there, and then what it sits on is a massive amount of contextual data, and then those tools and mechanisms that Verna was talking about in order to understand that. And what I mean by that, if we go back to my NPR example from before, we had that monitoring latency graph, right? And if we had had more dimensionality available to us, we had contextual data there, we would have been able to break that apart by desktop and mobile and see that desktop was causing the issue. And they would have been able to break it down again and say, look, New York City, Boston, and DC is where, where we're seeing these slow areas, and the rest of the country is not affected. And very quickly, we would have been able to understand that it was that DDoS system in our environment. In our case, we didn't have that information, and it was time racking our brains, just trying to figure out what's going on, going everywhere, going crazy is to do whatever we could, and finally just having an aha moment, like saying, let's just try this. Let's see if maybe this is it, right? But it took that moment of genius from one of those developers on my team to say, hey, I'm gonna try to connect these dots in my head. Let's give this a try, right? as opposed to having that there and actually being able to utilize it. And what's even cooler is where observability is going is you don't have to dig down in there, but AI and machine learning, especially in large systems, can help start bubbling that stuff up to you. So they just would have popped up on that graph if we did observability and say, hey, look, this is something new that we didn't see before in your system that suddenly appeared. And that right there would have been gold that morning for me. <laughs> 